Hello everyone for our last Stripe talk of the summer. I am going to invite Sita Devjot Kaur, who is a yoga, Kundalini yoga teacher. And she is going to talk to us about self-love. It loses self-love. Here Hello. she is. <laughs> Satnam. Satnam. Hello. Sa Namaste. Namaste. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Very well. Sita is live with us. Sita Devjot Kaur. Kaur? Yes. It's Kaur. <laughs> She's live with us from Bali. Um, Sita is a Kundalini yoga teacher. You are actually currently doing a six weeks program on self-love, the very yes. elusive self-love. Yeah. So I thought that would be brilliant to have a chat about your insights about the subject and, and for you to explain to us as well how Kundalini Yoga works. And so we can talk about many of the questions that usually people have about the subject. So yeah. namaste, and thank you for being part of the tribe. Thank Sita you, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we <laughs> met in the jungle, another tribe, right? Yes, <laughs> totally different, yeah. <laughs> the sick eat <laughs> <it> again. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, let's talk about a little bit about Kundalini Yoga, what it is. So it's actually simple. Kundalini Yoga is a technology, is a science that right. uh, thanks to uh, movement uh, and breathing uh, and mantra mixing together, um, they let you have a higher self and a higher conscience. It gives you a higher conscience and um, yeah, and it connects to yourself with your higher self because once you remember who you are, what you are, there is no way that you don't love yourself. Once you cannot with your divine, there is absolutely no way that you cannot love yourself. So, and yes, I'm doing... Yeah, tell me. No, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, there's a bit of a, like, lack yeah. of... Yeah, yeah, from Bali. <laughs> so don't worry, go ahead, go ahead. Just go. So, yes, I'm creating this program. I'm actually in the middle of the program right now about self-love. So it's divided in six, in six weeks. And we had the first week uh, uh, honoring our body because often we forget how incredible is our body, how in, in really like uh, we, we give like, um, we, um, we don't really appreciate all the work that he's doing every day. We forgot about that. We take it so, for yeah. granted. Yes, yeah. that's what I was thinking. We take it for granted. But it's an incredible temple. And we really like, uh, have to start to reconnect more often about that and uh, honoring, you know, like appreciate everything, every blood, cell, everything. So, yeah, then we did uh, the second week, we did the mind cleanse and uh, trying to release things that. Uh, uh, we like the monkey mind that is like always on thinking, thinking, and uh, try to come back to the natural mind, the meditative mind, and uh, and now we are doing the self confidence week. So mm -hmm. we are working a lot with the self confidence because it's quite hard while we are living like in a matrix that we are receiving every second, we're receiving impulse that we are not enough, that we have to buy certain things to be enough, that we have to look in a certain way to be enough. And it's all programmed to give you this message, you know? So it can be difficult sometimes to love and accept ourselves as we are. It's very, I, I think that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. I was watching like uh, something uh, where Ramdas is saying, Self-love truly is about acceptance yeah. again. And you know what's interesting is like every week I do a talk about 
a different subject and a different healing method. And the, the concept of acceptance is the one that comes back all the time, all the time. Yeah. It's almost like healing is acceptance, yeah. you know. And, and for, I was in another talk, we were talking about something entirely different. And yet we were talking about the concept of detachment that you find in Buddhism in Hinduism and in yoga, obviously. And yeah. I never understood so much the concept of detachment because I thought like, if you want something and you have to be involved and, and how can you be detached and being involved? Yeah. And it's- Detached also. It's that's also about uh, the image you think you create about yourself, you know, that that's about the, this person that you, you think you are. But because we all, we all wear a lot of masks, a lot of things, and um, we should be connected with what we really are. And then we can shine and really be the divine that is within us. The Indian I, Hindu tradition says you are not this mind you are not this body. And I thought, oh, this is great. And in the jungle, you kind of see that, don't you? Yes, <laughs> 100%. And yet, at the same time, like, I think the next step is kind of to understand that, okay, I'm not this mind, I'm not this body. But the minute I'm on this earth, I am this body or I'm not. I can't identify fully with the mind and the body. Because it's a gift that you received the body, I guess, you know? And yet to function on this earth, you do have to be in awe of this body and using this mind as a tool. I think exactly. The Use the body and the mind as a tool. Like the mind can be your best friend, but can be also your worst enemy. So it's only about you that you have to know how to use the mind, you know? And don't let the mind dominate you. You are who is receive the tool you know you are the one that can uh, kind of dominate the mind so if we go back we're going straight into the philosophic part of things which is great if we go back to kundalini yoga to for people who don't really know how is kundalini yoga uh different from just yoga and i know that you were trained in the yogi bhajan tradition yeah. so and you're dressed today in full white. White, always so, white. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I don't like compare, but I do believe, like, in Kundalini Yoga, what you experience in uh, one class of Kundalini Yoga, you might need, like, many years for Hatha Yoga. It's a technique, it's a, it's a technology that uh, really works very fast, faster than other type of, of yoga. But doesn't be, I don't think this means that this is better because I think everybody needs their time, you know, like uh, uh, maybe for other people it's better receive all this awareness in more long time and, uh, and maybe for others they want it something faster. So yeah, then there is also other tools like in the jungles that the, they give you this awareness way much faster. So it all depends how you want to work on yourself, on your uh, spiritual uh, health and the thing. Yeah. Whatever resonates then, more. I guess. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We wear white because with the white color, we expand our aura. So to have, uh, to attract beautiful light, to attract beautiful things, we have to be with a beautiful aura and, uh, and uh, big aura. So yes, with the white color, you expand your aura. And also you reflect energy. So if, for example, if you wear black, you absorb all the energy. And so it's up to you. If you are in a place that you don't want to absorb energy, wear black, wear white, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's the same with like, uh, well, I was training in, in, um, in Gong um, teaching and Gong master and whatever with Don Conroe, who was actually um, a disciple of Yogi Bhajan. And mm -hmm. I know Yogi Bhajan did include a lot of gong in yeah. practice, right? Yeah. So, in the Kriya, we have a lot of times we have the gong as well, included in the Kriya. Are you going to explain to me what are the Kriyas? But yeah. like, we were dressing in white as well. Reiki as well does that, actually. Yeah. I did a Reiki master and in Reiki you're supposed to dress white as well because at least it lets 
the energy flow rather yeah. than absorb again, like just block the energies. So yeah. that was the same thing, basically, the same traditions. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's all connected at the end. So tell me how, like, what are the Kriyas? How it, so the Kriyas, set of exercise in Kundalini Yoga, also this is different from other type of yoga. In Kundalini Yoga, you cannot change and uh, make the class as you want. You know, there is a set of exercise that has been given to us from years and years and years that we cannot change the set because we can mess up with the mind of the people like this. So we have absolutely to follow the set. The only things we can do is make it less longer the time or more longer. So the time is the only thing that you can change, but you have to follow the, the set that he, they, give, they give to you. So, but there is Kriyas, there is like thousands and thousands of Kriyas and uh, each Kriya works for something different, the Kriya for the heart, Kriya for the lips. And today I think we can do something for creating self-love. Yes. Do a short, very short Kriya for creating some self-love. Uh, and yeah. It's be good that you share with us like a technique that you know, we can all kind of go back to when we... Yeah, our true ascent. Too judgmental. Do you want to do this or do you, do you want to do it yeah. now? let's do that. Okay. Yeah, why not? So, so, please sit. Sit tall and beautiful. Close your eyes. So, first, I'm sorry. We are going to explain also that uh, we always tune in before the class. So tune in with the Adi Mantra, that is reconnect uh, with our with, uh, divine within us. So it's Om Namo Gurudev Namo for three times. And then Ad Gure Name, Jugad Gure Name, Sad Gure Name, Sri Gurudev Name for other three times. This is for protection. But if for your first time, don't worry, just listen to the mantra and try to let the mantra go within you, okay? So sit beautiful, grab your hands and bring them to your heart center. Close your eyes and focus on your third eye. Spine straight, shoulder relaxed, chin in. Take a deep breath in. Hold the breath in. And exhale. Another deep breath in. And exhale. Now deep breath in and uh, be ready to begin the mantra. Om Namo Jugat Gure Name, Sat Gure Name, Siri Gure Deve Name, Ad Gure Name, Jugat Gure Name, Sat Gure Name, Siri Gure Deve Name, Ad Gure Name, Jugat Gure Name, Sat Gure Name, Siri Gure Deve Name. Take a deep breath in, hold the breath in. And exhale. And now please bring your left hand on your side like this with the palm facing forward, like you're blessing the universe. And the other, the right hand over your head, blessing yourself. 
and the eyes are focused, they are closed but focused on the chin. So in this direction. Close your eyes, focus on the chin and just deep long breath. It say that uh, this exercise will hurt after five minutes if you have a lot of anger. Because self-help is very difficult to with uh, when someone is angry. So mentally blessing yourself right now. Keep going. Keep blessing yourself from the universe. Imagine a white shine light expanding from your hands. your arms is hurting, that means that there is anger. Anger that must be released. Anything that doesn't serve our soul must be released. Connect with your divine right now and keep blessing, keep blessing.
take a deep breath in. And we're gonna switch to the next exercise. Bring your hands forward in front of you with the palm facing down. This Kriya will open your heart to the world, but to yourself, the most important. Whoever is joining us right now can follow through with us anyway. Deep, long breath. Waves in and out through the nose. Take a deep breath in and bring your arms over to the sky. Stretch your arms to the sky, palm facing forward. And to finish, take a deep breath in, suspend the breath in, squeeze all your body, all your muscle has to be squeezed right now. Maintain the position, exhale. Inhale again. Inhale, suspend and squeeze. Exhale, and for the last time, inhale, suspend, squeeze, feel the electromagnetic field, feel your aura, and exhale, arms by side. And finish with the staff now. So, so now, so now. This was a very short kriya. Normally, it's way uh, more longer. <laughs> oh. But it's very good for blessing ourselves. It's work on the aura, and uh, yeah. But normally, we stay in this position for long time and then start to hurt and uh, and that means that we have stuff inside that we should be get up it hurts a lot yeah <laughs> well to me as well <laughs> you know about the heat yeah oh the heat the heat was like very intense in yeah. idea, heat is fire is anger it's for, it, mm, it can be not only but it can mm -hmm. be yeah yeah but i don't see anger as so such a bad bad emotion no why if you re release you know if you express it if you hold inside then it's bad but if you have your moment of anger it's fine it's just an emotion we don't we, can, we have nobody to judge this you know but we cannot hold it inside that's when the problem starts that's true. That's what they say in Ayurveda as well. Every illness comes from the suppression yeah. of uh, either an emotional loss or anger or, yeah. or even vata that needs to dream and circulate and move. 
And if you, if that is in a relationship that kind of suppress this like wheel to go around and you just, it's like where illness comes. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, lot of energy that we hold inside, then it can transform to illness, 100% true, yeah. Thank you so much for this one. Thank you. All right, to go back to our subject then after that. So yeah, so you explained the Kriya. So the Kriyas can, uh, the Kriyas can be targeted to part of the body, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just emotions. I mean, yeah. You pre and this is why I guess you call it a technology, because mm -hmm. it's exactly a science. Yeah. 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 It's it's something yeah. that they've been studying uh, from years and years and years and. Uh, it's really a sign that this movement combined with this breath, with this mantra sometimes, with, um, because we chant a lot as well, we have a lot of mantras, so the combination that then yeah. give you the benefits, yeah. That's it. So since uh, the theme of today is um, to love oneself, really, self-confidence, self-love, and I think like those terms have been used so much that, you know, nobody knows what to put in them anymore so much. I mean, it kind of like it speaks for itself, right? We know what we can imagine. But I think it's interesting where we, we started the conversation talking about acceptance, first of all. Yeah. Like in self-love and self-confidence, there is, or at least in self-love, there is a lot of this notion of self-acceptance, truly, yeah. just, right? Yeah. I just wanted to talk to ask you because I think this is really the link between Kundalini Yoga and and self love to some extent. Mm -hmm. I was looking at a video from Krishna Murti Guru who said he's talking about the Kundalini, Kundalini rising. And I mm -hmm. wanted to discuss the Kundalini rising. Because I think there's like people imagine that there's a real snake that's gonna, not a real snake, <laughs> some kind of like snake infused energy that comes from your, your, your ground, I mean, your, your root chakra, and it's gonna go up and like, and people yeah, I... to be having like very strange experiences and all the rest of it. And Krishna Morty says, as far as I know, like the yogis I know have practiced this kind of uh, technique. Nobody ever really had like, yes, of course, there is a rise of energy when you are a yogi by, you know, right, um, right eating, right, right mm -hmm. everything, just like the Buddha said, and like the yogi practices, right behavior, right everything. And so from that comes, from this discipline comes a race of energy. Can you talk to us about this Kundalini rising? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't believe that Kundalini yoga is uh, awakening your Kundalini energy, but it prepares your body if it's happening, it's awakening. So, because I think there are also other techniques that awaken the Kundalini energy, but the body has to be prepared, you know? Yeah. Uh, because if it's not prepared, it can really mess up everything. So that's why I was telling you before about the Hatha Yoga, that maybe for other people, they need more time to get the experience yeah. that uh, in Kundalini you can have in a shorter time. But also like, also with, uh, uh, with Ayahuasca, for example, there are all tools, I think, that they give you this sense of awareness, this consciousness, and, and there is tools that are, they need more time and others that are way more faster. So I yeah. think with Kundalini Yoga, the good thing is that it prepares your body to receive this, um, this awakening, this, uh, this yeah, higher consciousness. Yeah, to receive this higher consciousness. I think there's the initiate and the profane and those energies. And we talk about them as energy because I think nobody really knows what it is, what it is but it can be very overwhelming. I mean, we, we yes, mentioned... Yes, exactly. Uh, you go to ayahuasca and you, the integration is not right. Like it was for me, it wasn't right. Oh. It's like I was faced with a level of consciousness actually that was not, that was so huge and so big that I felt minuscule and it's almost, it was depressing. 
somehow. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's yeah. I got, I got it. I have also some friends, like one friend, that um, I think she was not prepared for something like this, for something so big. So she's yeah, she received many problems with uh, mental health after. Yeah. Because I guess maybe her body was not ready to receive something so yes, so big. Mm. The body and the mind, I think, because yeah, that yeah I'm whole, talking about yeah. It's the whole point of meditation, isn't it? It's like yeah, exactly. there's a gymnastic in there. So yeah, so okay, I'm not this body, I'm not this mind, and yet as I'm incarnate oh, yeah. on this earth, then I still have to honor the body, honor the mind, because they 100%. are different. And I have to make sure I work with them properly, right? The Krishna Murti thing is interesting again because he says he says, No, I don't know anybody who really has like the snake rising and all this. He said, Okay, the practice of yoga is something that's gonna increase this energy and prepare you. Just what you say, really. He says it in another way. But he says, and this is where I link it to the our topic of self love. He says something like the the true rising the true awakening is the loss of the sense of self. Yeah. But the loss of the, the image we believe that we are, who we think we are, but not, nothing to, it's nothing compared to what we, who, what we really are. That's so, it. So, yeah, we grow up thinking and creating a mask, and, um, but then we have to work on uh, release this mask, release all these things that we build and know our life exactly and it took me for a it took me forever to understand you know you're in india and everybody tells you about ego and you're not stupid you've heard of freud and you know what the ego is or at least you you think you know but i started to really understand what ego was when i understood that it was my identity it was my it was the fact that i was the daughter of such and such i was french i was raised with these values these beliefs this exactly. thing these expectations, and that all of this is my identity. This is me on this earth again, this body, this mind, made like this. And actually, all the suffering, and and God knows I suffer still so much from from not being self, from from the lack of self-love. And he says, the problem is the Krishnamurti guy. (laughs) My God, how I call him the (laughs) Krishnamurti. Is a proper guru, right? Krishna Murti. He says, he says, me, the self, is in constant conflict, creating those dualities. Yeah. He's, he's, I'm, I'm beautiful. I'm not beautiful. I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not enough. I am enough. She is like this. So then the notion of judgment comes in, doesn't it? Yeah. We were talking about acceptance, and it's opposite. We have to be like something along the lines of judgment and judging oneself right yeah true do you find yeah, it? i think Is... i believe that all the pain as you said all the pain and things just coming from the ego but i do believe that uh, the ego is not something so bad i mean we just need to understand how it works and we have to we have to meet as our friend you know like uh, understand uh and appreciate it in, uh, in the right way you know again this so... notion the ego is actually your tool. Yeah, in... another tool. Everything is a tool at the end. You need... 100%. And the big difference is probably not to identify fully with it and remember yeah. that inside, somewhere, under all these layers, is the true thing, the true you. Yes, the true identity, exactly. We, in Kundalini Yoga, we actually... Um, a, like our namaste is satnam, satnam. That means uh, truth is my identity. So basically, when you say hi to someone, you say satnam, and you you introduce you as your truth identity, not who you, your name or who you think you are, but what who you really are. Mm. So, so you know. that's it all, doesn't it? Mm-mm. Yes, exactly. It's it a journey does. to remember with what what we are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To but remove all this illusion that we create in our life and remembering the journey of remembering life, I guess. Yeah, as long as there are like these opposing desires, those judgments, 
loving is very, there is a waste of energy to start with. Mm -hmm. and, and when there is that waste of energy, there's a, there's a lack of love. I mean, yeah. He also, Krishnamurti was saying, like, what is love? And instead of saying what is love, he said, what is it that, what, what love is not? Mm -hmm. And he goes something again along the lines of, where there is violence, there can't be love. love. Mm -hmm. It's obvious. But we tend to forget the violence we do to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Every day time. Yeah, we're monkey mind. Uh, well, we are not enough. We are not good enough. We are, yeah, it's always there. That's why we have to work on meditate, on meditation, and work on our neutral mind to remove this uh, blah, 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 talking. Uh. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm like now almost, I'm not 50 yet, but almost. <laughs> I didn't think. Great. And I was in Tulum. And everybody mm. was like 10 or 15 years younger. And suddenly I see my forehead. I see all my friends have Botox to start with. <laughs> and I'm like, I look 10 years older than my friends when I'm not. But hey, you know. And <laughs> the I, energy, of course. I thought I dealt with all this. I thought <laughs> I was this. I could just be and be fine. And it's okay. And I get into Loom and everybody's like 15 years younger. And even my friend looked 10 years older. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing here? And I feel mm. And I stop mm. myself suddenly. Something mm. comes to my, just, I thought I was done with this crap. Mm. No, it's just yeah. poke every now and then. Yeah, 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 100%. You think you're done, but then boom, come back. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> like some pattern behavior, thought pattern. Yeah, yeah, 100%. We think that we finally release it all, but no. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Like, we hold so much in our body, really. Like, uh, we hold things that are not, from, not even from us, you know? Like, we hold energy from our past generation. We, yeah. So, we hold a lot in our body. And to be really, like, releasing everything, I think, is a lot of work. A lot. And then they can come up as well, again, sometimes. <laughs> So it's good to work always on your practice, spiritual practice, on your meditation. And even if it's, you know, even if it's not your meditation, what is work on you, like, uh, I don't know, there is also breath working, there is or dancing, you know, put the music on and dance, even this is kind of meditation. There is life, it's full of tools and you just need to, actually just need to find your medicine, find your medicine and use it. So. And what you're saying now is that you're saying, and what you've been saying, the whole way we've been talking, I feel, you tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like you're saying there is no feeling that's wrong, be it anger, mm -hmm. joy, mm -hmm. or joy is a bit different. But you just need to feel it, yeah. It's Every about... emotion that comes up, you have to feel it, yeah, and not hold inside. Yeah, I'm actually now having a, a detox, so I'm relating this a lot, and I, I feel like even food is something that uh, just to suppress the emotion. But then they get stuck anyway in our body. But maybe because sometimes we are afraid to feel a lot, we suppress. We suppress with a lot of things. But the truth is that we have to feel it in able, to be able to release it. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's not easy, 100%. Easy to say and difficult to act and uh, practice. Yeah. In one of the other talks we had, like on the tribe talk here, it was just so clear as well. Just what you're saying again. It's like, I feel like, you know, what motivated me to do these talks was to, I saw so many people who were really lost or at least were lacking the means to help themselves. Mm. And I thought, what about we invite people who have all in common to heal through modalities with in, which increase consciousness. And it sounds yeah. like a lot of blah, 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 but actually... That truly is what it is. I'm yeah. a nice practitioner. Every day I see people who have, they have something physical, mm -hmm. but none of the patient I've had, I'm talking all the patient I've had, all of them, this physical pain is coming from something emotional or yeah. something repressed or something. And again, it's, it goes back to, 
the process of healing, it does go to shit before it gets better. It's tough 100%. to up, isn't it? 100%, yeah. Like uh, healing is not uh, fun and beautiful. Healing can be dark, it can be, it can be ugly, it can be very bad. Yeah, but it's the only way to heal. So embrace, let's embrace even this dark side of us. It's fine, you know? Everything is God at the end. Dark or light, everything is God. And we have to embrace everything and just release anything that doesn't serve our soul. And uh, yeah, don't. That's... Yes. <laughs> Did you learn a lot of this in the jungle as well? Yeah, 100%. It changed my life, the jungle. But I don't advise to do Kundalini Yoga and, um, <laughs> and go in the jungle. 100%, no? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, because yeah it's, it's i think there are two tools very powerful and together is not a nice mix probably so but when i did it i was at the beginning of my journey with kundalini yoga and uh, for me it was one of the best things i did in my life me too and it really change uh, how you see the world how you see everything mm -hmm. me too and i'm very very grateful for that I, I, and also you You, you and I will have to have another tribe talk about ayahuasca. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. That would... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me now, um, how do we find you? How can we get re uh, in touch with um, you? I'm doing now every Wednesday uh, at, uh, I think, 8 a.m. in London time. So nine Europe time. Uh, I'm doing a class of Kundalini Yoga. Nice. Uh, because my self-love program is already started. So the group is already created. So I think uh, it's going to work on me to remove this. Because I can't hear you, babe. Now you can hear me? Oh, it's okay. Yeah. So yeah, the program is already started. I think I will... Um... I, I can give the programs one is finished with the class that are rec recorded because or every class is recorded. But yeah, but if anyone wants to join me on every Wednesday, I have live classes from on, on Zoom. Yes. And yeah. And it's open to everyone. No need uh, any experience. Uh, everybody's more than welcome. And yeah. <laughs> okay, wonderful. And the, and the self-love... Um program you might put it online or you might make it available yeah. way or another to people well, initially we put them available because yeah i will record it's, every class is recorded so it's gonna be available for everyone as well who want to have the class registered mm -hmm. okay okay that's wonderful uh i don't know if anybody has questions but if you don't We will, anyway, this, this talk will be um, on our Instagrams and I'll make sure that you get the video, uh, obviously, for whoever wants to see it and, or send it to their friends. I am going to stop doing the, the tribe talk in August because I think everybody's on vacation, at least in Europe. And so there is not that many viewers just now, but we'll have some interesting one in September. And I think if you're up for it, we should talk about ayahuasca and plant medicine in September. And now that how it changes people's life. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, is, it some, is there something else you want to say about self-love? Mm. Uh, yeah, what to say. So... Yeah, it's, it's a difficult topic, you know. We really think sometimes that we love ourselves, but then we felt in behaviors, in things that uh, let us understand that maybe we don't love truly ourselves so much. So it's not that easy. We are living in the world that we have impulse every two seconds that uh, like the matrix is really like created for make you feel not good with yourself uh, to, mm. to like it creates illusion in, in yourself and we believe in this illusion sometimes. So. Yeah, self-love is also release all these illusions and remember what we really are, 100%. Acceptation. I think that's, that was the Ram Dass thing at the beginning where he says socialization and, you know, by rewarding certain behaviors and pursuing others and like 
it starts in childhood it's like the it's below the you know it's the the part of the iceberg that you can't see it's the unconscious and it very often results in inadequacy you feel inadequate or like me when i'm on the beach in tulum you know like inadequate <laughs> yeah also for example they say like uh to truly love someone you have to first love yourself something like this i don't really believe that i don't want to say that this, if you don't love yourself you cannot love anybody else but what i what i believe is that um, if you love yourself then the relationship with others they going to be pure and, and beautiful you know there will be not coming up trauma and this and that or uh, bad behaviors coming from uh, your insecurity or whatever so Yeah, self-love is important for yourself, but also for creating relationship with others. And I think that's the real point, right? They yeah. talk we we could have another one about true love, but truly it's about as soon as there is division, there is no true love. So that's what I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tita, thank you so much. So much. That was Satnam sister that was so good to see you and you beam this like what you talk about and you feel like you know the true yogini who actually your your aura your energy your aura breathes what you preach and that was very beautiful thank you so much for inviting me and uh, I'll see you soon yes we'll have to do some more i'm going to call you back for september Everybody for joining that was wonderful and have a great summer for those who are like on that side of the world enjoy bali sita i'm sure that's beautiful and you're fine there <laughs> thank you so much satnam satnam bye everybody bye bye